Now it's time to talk about hackers, the kind of people that basically maliciously break into systems to get things out of them. Now let's talk again about what hacking is. Basically it means to attack systems, networks, applications by exploiting their weaknesses, their vulnerabilities in other words, in order to get unauthorized access to data and system. The goals that a hacker may have are data destruction, theft, getting unauthorized access, getting their privileges elevated to a higher level, or just about any other unauthorized action or purpose you could think of. Now hackers can be categorized in several different ways. And the ways that we talk about here in the CEH training are not the only ways. Depending upon which security text you look at, there could be different ways to classify them. But in most cases, we classify hackers by their motivation, uh, what, what motivates them to hack, what their goals are, what they're trying to achieve, maybe which side they're on. Maybe they're a good hacker, an ethical hacker, or a bad or malicious hacker. So what side they're on, and also the level of skills they have, because you have different levels of skills with hacking. Okay, You have novice hackers and you have expert hackers. So you could classify hackers according to those things as well. Let's talk about some of the different categorizations that you might see on the exam. First of all, we have script kiddies, and this is the basic novice kind of hacker. Maybe these hackers are new to the business, they're interested in it for having fun, that's probably their motivation is fun, they're learning about technology, but maybe they have little technical knowledge. Now back in the day, script kiddies were fairly common. We're seeing an increased level of skill even with the script kiddies, even with new hackers, because a lot of kids, for lack of a better word, or new hackers are learning programming and technology a lot faster than some of us older folks used to. So the notion of script kiddies is kind of fading off into the distance because even new hackers are coming into it with more technical knowledge than they used to. The primary motivation is fun or to learn how to hack. They probably use other people's pre-made tools. A lot of them don't write their own scripts or programs. They just may use a GUI tool where you click next in order to hack. Very easy. Those are script kiddies. Then you have black hats, and those are typically offensive, malicious hackers. And you could categorize black hats into a wide range of areas as well. But primarily, they use their hacking skills purely for offensive and malicious purposes. They're going after data. They're going after money. Maybe they're taking revenge against an organization. Maybe they're an activist or a cyber terrorist. And we'll talk about those typical types of hackers a little bit later. In any case, a black hat is a malicious hacker. Then you have white hats, and white hats are typically those of us who are ethical hackers, who know tools, techniques, and other ways and methods of hacking, but we use those skills and abilities for good. We use those hacking skills to help defend against network attacks and make systems more secure. Sometimes uh, white hats are called security consultants, analysts, or security engineers, or ethical hackers for that matter. Then you have gray hats, and, and they kind of fall in a weird area because gray hats at various times may have been good hackers or bad hackers. In other words, they could have been black hats at one time and made the transition. They reformed, and now they're white hats. Or you could also have rogue white hats who uh, are security consultants, and maybe they need the money or something happens to them, and they need to get revenge against an organization, and they may do some bad things. Uh, so gray hat hacking is a little bit in the middle. It's a uh, no pun intended, a gray area for us actually. But they can be good or bad or both and they still use the same tools and techniques used by black hats and white hats. Then you have cyber terrorists and obviously these are the bad guys as well. These are organized groups intent on spreading fear of data loss or disruption as a means to meet their goals, whatever their goals are. And those goals could be religious, political, nationalistic goals, or even activist goals. In any case, sometimes they believe they're doing the right thing but the actions they take are still illegal or wrong. It's hard kind of sometimes to separate black hats from cyber ter terrorists, from hacktivists, and so forth. It really depends upon the fine line of their goal and their techniques and what they're after. Then you have state-sponsored hackers, and these are trained, funded, and supported agents of a nation state or a foreign government. And their goals obviously are espionage against a country or a government or conducting cyber warfare operations. And they typically have a lot of money and a lot of skills because they're funded and trained by a government. They have almost unlimited resources. Then you have hacktivists. And hacktivists are a form of black hat hacker in that they're hacking for a cause. They may be against a particular social issue or for a social issue, or maybe they feel like uh, there's been some injustice done. So they're hacking to spread their message about this cause. 
They may deface websites, cause denial of service attacks, disclose data on a widespread basis. Think of the hacking group Anonymous. Uh, the things that those folks do are pretty much hacktivism and cyber terrorism types of acts. Again, it's hard to draw the line sometimes between these groups. Then you have corporate hackers. And these folks target an organization's proprietary data or intellectual properties. They're trying to steal corporate data, maybe trade secrets, or anything that would give them a competitive advantage over a competitor or a company. They also may use their skills to blackmail corporate executives or a company. They also may use their skills to just simply make money off of a corporation, so they could be just criminals. In any case, they typically target an organization or a company for the purposes of revenge, money, or competitive advantage. Again, it's very difficult in some of these classifications to draw a line and say that this group or that person is specifically a cyber terrorist or a hacktivist or a corporate hacker. Sometimes you'll see black hats do all of these things at different times, depending upon their motivations and goals. And that's really what it boils down to is motivation and goal as to how you classified these groups of hackers. So those are just some examples of the different kinds of hackers that we talk about during this course. And of course, you could categorize these groups of hackers in several other different ways as well.